Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I have a sweet and pretty shape card featuring Spellbinder's Painter's Palette. This all die cut card is quick and easy to make. If you see anything that grabs your attention, you'll find links to the products that I've used in the description of this YouTube video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. I'm starting off with Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock to cut my card base. The cardstock is folded in half. On the fold line, I overhang my die to create the hinge. The die is going through two thicknesses of heavy cardstock, so I roll it back and forth a couple of times in my platinum die cutter. The first pass takes a bit of work on my part to get it through, but after the initial cut, then it moves smoothly through the machine. And as you can see, the die cutter has gone through both thicknesses of this heavy cardstock, and my card base is complete. Where the hinge is, the palette will be misshapen, so I have die cut a single panel of the palette which will be adhered onto the card base. And here it is in my spatter box. I'm going to apply a fine spatter across this panel using some of the inks that will be used to color the ink splotches. Because honestly, are palettes ever clean? I wanted the colors on this card to be very soft and pretty, so I pulled out some of my lighter Distress Oxide inks. A couple of the colors that I chose were darker. For those ones, I didn't even pick up any ink from the ink pad. I just used the blending tool and tapped it on the ink splotch. Those sponges always hold lots of ink. Our four styles of ink splotches, I die cut two of each plus I die cut sheet foam. So I should have eight, but when I started stacking them onto the foam backing, one was missing in action, nowhere to be found. The pretty pastel ink splotches were laid out around the perimeter of the panel. I fiddled around a bit, making sure that two styles of ink splotches were not side by side. Because they are foam backed, I did put some weight on them after I adhered them so that there's good even contact between the foam and the cardstock. To create the paintbrush from this set, there are three dies. Both the handle and the brush have been die cut from a pretty dusty rose cardstock. The ferrule has been die cut from white cardstock and I adhere that first to the handle and then attach the brush. These die cuts really have some beautiful textural detail to them. I'm going to round off the design of this palette card with three simple blossoms. Three white cardstock flowers and dusty rose stamens were die cut using Spellbinder Cinch and Go Blossoms die set. A ball tool is used on a molding mat just to cup them by pressing them in the center to give them some shape. I'm using a good dollop of glue at the base of the flowers and then leaving them to dry before I attach the stamens. After the card was complete, I decided that I would add in three sprigs of ivory leaves from Spellbinder's Typing Class die set. I just felt that it would help balance out that grouping of flowers. These little amendments are something that I often do. I make a card, think I'm complete, sleep on it, wake up the next morning with fresh eyes, look at it, and make my final decision whether something more needs to be done. The sentiment, just a note, comes from Spellbinder's Just a Tweet die set. It has also been cut from the same Dusty Rose cardstock. For some added dimension, I'm putting a Doris thin foam strip on the back of the paintbrush. These strips have adhesive on both sides and they were the perfect width for this narrow brush. After the backing is removed, then I pop it in place. 
adhesive used to attach the flowers is dry and I can go ahead and add in those dusty rose stamens. I choose some pale pink confetti out of a pastel rainbow mix. They are placed in the center of each of the flowers and then a few on the panel. Before I commit to adhering the confetti, I always lay them out to make sure that I like how they add to the design. Well, wet paint is shiny, and anyways, I need some sparkle on this card. So I'm going to use Nouveau Crystal Glaze and apply it to all of the paint splotches. This product is easily applied. It even goes around that thin band where the highlight cutout is without actually going into the die cut itself. Because the paint splotches are foam backed, they already stood out, but adding in this glaze just really takes them to the next level. The glaze does take some drying time, but not as long as I would have thought, so it is all set up in about an hour. So pretty and shiny. And the last thing that I must do is add in my Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew to all of the confetti. The confetti that I've chosen is already very beautiful, but with the addition of the Morning Dew, wow! This shape card fits perfectly in an A2 sized envelope and it will display nicely for the recipient. And that wraps up this pretty card in soft pastels featuring Spellbinder's Painter's Palette. I find that it is not easy to find a die that is suitable for a shape card, but the palette in this die set is perfect. It's fun to break up the card making routine and do something different, especially when it's a card that's quick and easy. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I appreciate your visit.